Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? A cursory look at the book of Genesis reveals a God who is all-present, a God who is also all-knowing, omniscient, a God who created the universe, who knows everything, and at the same time, a meticulous look at this same book reveals a God who could suddenly be surprised at one particular event. A God who is determined to know. A God who desires to go and verify something. When we take these different attributes of God in the book of Genesis, so literal, we could actually delve into error in understanding the book of Genesis. This is so because the human authors of sacred scriptures employ the tool of anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism is a concept whereby we give human attributes to the divine or to animals or things. In this sense, we give human attributes to God in an attempt to understand this God who is so transcendental, who is so omnipresent and omniscient. So that is what the human authors of sacred scriptures attempted to do in understanding this God who is so distant from man and at the same time comes to relate with man face to face. And this is not far-fetched from what we see from the first reading of today. The first reading taken from the book of Genesis reveals a friendly dialogue with God. Here we see Abraham's solemn prayer, the first intercessory prayer made on earth. Abraham began by interceding for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah God actually was surprised at the reports he got from Sodom and Gomorrah and he was determined to know. He said he would go down and discover. Then he met Abraham and Abraham pleaded with him not to destroy the city. Here Abraham decides to engage with God, to engage in a friendly dialogue with God. He began by pleading that the city be spared. 
Abraham makes use of 50 just people. Would God destroy the city if there are 50 just people? Here, Abraham draws the line and says that if God crosses this line, then he would not be a God of justice. Why did Abraham use the particular number 50 and not just any random number 100, 20 or 5? Why did he begin with 50 and why did he end with 10? In the book of Amos chapter 5 verse 3, we see that it takes at least 100 persons to make a small city. So when Abraham talks of finding 50 just persons in the city, Abraham was telling God, perhaps there are 50 just men and 50 unjust men. Would you destroy the city and destroy the just ones together if there are actually half just and half unjust persons in the city? And God said, for the sake of the righteous, for the sake of the just, I will not destroy the city. Abraham persisted and engages God in a friendly dialogue. What if there are 45? What if there are 40? Abraham continued till he got to the number 10. Now why 10 and not 5 or 1? 10 because it is the smallest number to form a group. And we can see 10 as used in describing you know, a smallest portion of a larger quantity. By his way of intercession, Abraham could be seen or understood as a prophet. Little wonder God in Genesis chapter 20 verse 7 talks of Abraham as a prophet. A prophet in this sense as Abraham did was one who interceded for his people, who stood for his people before God, who sought the welfare of his people. Now, in pleading with God, Abraham understood that God is a merciful God. In fact, mercy is his attribute. Does this remind us of the book of Pope Francis when he says that the name of God is mercy? That aside, Abraham understood this and he decided to engage with God as a prophet. We see similar engagements in the book of Exodus chapter 32 to chapter 34 where Moses pleaded on behalf of the people. This is what a prophet does. We also see in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 12 when you read from verse 23 Samuel also pleaded with God. We see this too in Amos chapter 7 verse 1 to 9. We also see this in the case of prophet Jeremiah. These people interceded for the people. As such, we can say that Abraham was a prophet in that context because he had the welfare of his people at heart and he interceded for them. This is indeed a man who loves his brothers and intercedes for his people. Here, Abraham was not interceding only for his relative lot, but was interceding that God should spare the people. Here we can see the power of intercessory prayer. Abraham was indeed pleading and asking God to save his people. Spare thy people, Lord, for the sake of some righteous people in that city. The persistency of Abraham is also reflected in this Sunday's Gospel reading. Here we see Christ teaching his disciples on his way to Jerusalem, still on his way to Jerusalem, the necessity of persistency in prayer. There is a striking similarity, or would I say connection, between the style of Abraham's prayer and the style of the Lord's prayer, the Our Father. Now, when Abraham was dialoguing with God and interceding for his people, he first of all recognizes who God is. He is a God of justice, he loves justice, and in fact, he punishes wickedness. Now, Abraham recognizes the worth of God. 
Then he went on to recognize also who he, Abraham, is. He recognizes the fact that he is a mere mortal and in fact he cannot just withstand God or argue or talk to God. And that is how we see the same similarity in the prayer of our Father. When we say our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are acknowledging who God is. God is our merciful Father who is in heaven and of course we know he's everywhere. And after acknowledging who he is, we go on to acknowledge who we are as humans, as mere mortals, in need of his daily graces. And that is why we focus on ourselves and say, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not put us to the test, but deliver us from the evil one. In this prayer, we recognize the fact that we have a loving Father, a merciful Father, who takes care of us, and in fact that His will be done, may His kingdom be established, and that in all we need His constant graces, we need His protection, we need His providence. That was the style of Abraham's prayer, and above all, he persisted, and that was why Christ narrated that parable that teaches us about persistency in prayer. Beloved friends in Christ, we have been baptized in Christ and we have received the spirit of adoption that enables us to relate with God as children of God. That spirit enables us to cry out to God, Abba, Father. Abba, like the Aramaic word, Daddy. So we see whenever we call our dads daddy, we see that intimacy between a father and the child, that close connection. That is how it is, not just father as, you know, a difficult father figure, but relating with God as a daddy. And that is what God is to us. He is our spiritual daddy. He is our daddy who has adopted us, as Paul would say, that we have received the Spirit in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, and this Spirit is what enables us to relate with God with a childlike trust and confidence. Beloved in Christ, do you persist in prayer? Do you have the spirit of persistence? How often do you cry out to God in prayer? God is not that cruel, so that when you cry out to Him often, he will not listen to you. Are you weak and heavy laden? Are you combat with a load of care? Take it to the Lord in prayer and he would see you true. As children of Abraham, we should learn from the examples of Abraham in today's first reading and understanding that this God we relate with is such a merciful God that has had pity on us already as the second reading said, that we have been pardoned, we have been bought with a price, and Christ has paid the debt of our sins on the cross. And if we could only kneel and pray to him, recognize our, our human limitations, our human state, and pray to him in time of distress. Second book of Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says, if we look down from heaven, he will listen to us, he will heal our land and bless us. This is how we are to learn from Abraham in relating with God. On this very day, the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are called to return to our Lord and pray to him. He has left for us the, our Father as the model of all prayer, as the prayer that contains everything we actually need or dare to ask. And with that spirit which he has given to us at baptism, we are free to relate with him for he is our heavenly father. And he will not deny us. Even wicked men know how to give good things to their children. How much more our heavenly father who is 
wonderful, who is good, who is the author of goodness, His goodness himself, who is mercy itself, would listen to our prayers and grant us the Holy Spirit. May the good Lord continue to bless his words in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.